Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. I'd like to take a little bit of a moment to go over the offensive security pen test report OSCP exam template. In this case, we have a template that doesn't come from OFSEC themselves, but from who is Flynn. And he has done his best to encapsulate what should be included in a report. Now read your exam guidelines carefully and read the requirements for your current syllabus carefully. Because as you might know, they might change from time to time. And this is a snapshot from 2021. So the requirements might have changed. I am not responsible if you fail because you follow this system. It's up to you to check your own requirements. That being said, this is the 2021 syllabus adapted version. So in here we can see that we have a little bit of an introduction followed by an objective objective with the requirements we'll go over what those are in a little bit followed by a high level summary with some recommendations as you can see recommendations are nice and at the top what i do myself as well these days it's always better for your summaries and your recommendations to be at the top and then we start talking about methodologies now i always put scope in here as well this is not included, you don't have to do this of course, but I've noticed that for our pen test scope often is required in the reports. When it comes to methodologies, we're talking about information gathering, the penetration testing itself of the different systems with their service enumeration and Prevesc each respectively. And we've got maintaining access with house cleaning as well. These steps are important. A lot of people might forget about them and might want to see, oh, why I'm going to fill in my report at the end of the exam. Oh, I don't have the maintaining access and house cleaning steps. So remember, when you're doing your exam, always think of a way if this, the admin resets the system or reboots the system, do you still have persistent access? How will you guarantee persistent access? Those are in your maintaining access section and your house cleaning is if you've created files what did you do to clean them up if you've left litter how did you clean up after yourself we also have our additional items in here which in this case are our appendages now in your exam you will see that your introduction you're going to talk about the test report itself what it's for what is going to be outlined in it and the purpose of the report your objective on the other hand you're going to talk about the objective of the assessment what you wanted to achieve with it in this case the student is tasked with following a methodological approach and obtaining access to the objective goals this test simulates an actual pen test and how you would start from beginning to end you can copy paste this, but it's always better if you give this your own spin a little bit. That way at least you know that we've understood it. On the requirements, in this case we say, okay, the student will require to fill out the penetration test and he's going to give us the following sections, the high level summary and recommendations in a non-technical way, methodology walkthrough and detailed outline of what he's done. Each finding with included screenshots and any additional items that were not included. In the high level summary, we will toss, and this is where their scope comes into play, I see. Here they say what has been the objective of the whole network evaluation. What were they trying to do when performing the test? These were there were several alarming vulnerabilities that were identified, and that's where your high level summary comes in on the network when performing attacks i was able to gain access to multiple machines primarily due to outdated patches and pure sec poor security misconfigurations during the testing i had administrative level access to multiple systems all systems were successfully exploited and access granted of course if you were not able to successfully exploit all systems don't just keep it in there read through all of this and change what you have to and here the exploits are outlined a little bit better. 
Now, in the recommendations, they always include recommendations. Why is that? Because you're the security engineer. You're supposed to know how to solve what you just found as well. Because otherwise you might find that they included a lackluster patch which doesn't include the root cause and there might still be reason for concern. Your recommendation should be pretty high up at the top. Why is that? Because a manager just wants to read the recommendations and conclusions and that's it. Your more technical people are going to zoom down into your document, further into your methodologies, see how you did your information gathering. Okay, we have our penetration next. How did that happen with the service enumeration that was going on? What did we find on TCP? What did we find on UDP? The nmap scan results with the initial shell vulnerability exploited and any additional information that we can find. Vulnerability explanation and fixes are always important because of course we can say you've had a cross-site scripting and parameter X but okay what does that really mean you might have local file inclusion but what's a local file inclusion try to explain this to somebody who might not be as technical or security minded as you vulnerability fixes severity in this case you can use different severity tables you can give your own severity to it low medium high critical it all depends how you are taught in your current syllabus the proof of concept code, I always only included proof of concept code if it was changed from the original. That's what they taught me during my teachings. Now I've realized as well that it's better to always just copy that, even if it's just as additional information or an attachment. Why is that? Because even if you include a link to your source, that source might change and then you still are linking to wrong information. That's why, in my opinion, it's better to include your proof of concept code. Don't forget to take screenshots and test evidence while you go. Also, of course, your flags. What I did was I took a screenshot of most of my flags, but I forgot to copy them. And I had to type over every flag met met very, very precisely into my document, which was very frustrating because you have two per machine. Next up, they go talk about their privilege escalation. Anything privilege escalation related comes into here following the same structure with the vulnerability exploit, the explanation, the fix, severity, exploit code, proof of concept and proof of uh, the screenshot of course I mean, and your contacts of proof.txt. This goes on for all five machines and in our case or at least in your case, you will be taking an exam that includes Active Directory abuse. So things might change here. You might need to report differently because you might need to pivot through your Active Directory. Keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. If you need to make changes, do it. It's as simple as that. You might or might not get a buffer overflow machine. This report template still includes a buffer overflow machine, but don't be fooled by it. It doesn't mean that you're going to get it by guarantee these t this time. So be very, very wary of that. The maintaining access section and house cleaning we kind of went over already. And for the additional items, they've included a little bit of a table, which is always handy. Metasploit slash meter printer usage if it happened on the exam. I for honestly I forgot that I was even allowed to use it. I forgot to learn it until the end and at the end of my exam I was like, ah screw it, I'll just exploit everything manually anyway. <laughs> and then for your buffer overflow, if you have it, you can have your buffer overflow code in here. So that was just a brief look at a report that I was using this template it still stemmed from the time that I did my exam. So again with Active Directory that might have changed. But we'll take a look at more of these documents as we go. And I would like to thank you all for watching. Thanks amazing hackers. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.